Hello and uh, welcome uh, to this podcast prepared by ProfWeb and Salties. I'm Ryan, an editor from profweb.ca, and I'm joined by Kevin, a physics teacher uh, from Banier College, uh, who is also a member of the Salties Active Teaching and Learning Community of Practice. Uh, today's podcast is a bit of a first for our organizations, uh, and what a bold experiment it's going to be today. Uh, today, uh, for our inaugural podcast, we're joined by two teachers from Dawson College, We've been using asynchronous interactive video capsules as part of their approach uh, to alternative teaching. So uh, welcome to uh, Carmen and welcome to Yan. Um, would you please uh, introduce yourself, uh, perhaps uh, starting with uh, Carmen, your name, your department, the courses in which you're uh, using this approach. Uh, so yeah, my name is Carmen Leung and I'm in the chemistry department at uh, Dawson College. And um, I teach general chemistry, chemistry solutions, um, organic chemistry, and uh, secondary five chemistry. And for today's um, podcast, what we'd like to do is introduce to you uh, some techniques that we use uh, for tutorials that we're preparing um, to help a group of students in the biomedical technical program. Uh, so that the students go in better prepared. It's, it's like a refresher on the chemistry knowledge that they'll need to go forward in the program. Yes, so my name is Jan Bouriet. I'm also a chemistry professor at Dawson College. I also teach general chemistry, chemistry solution, organic chemistry. I also teach another course, a complementary course for non-science students called comic book chemistry, where I use examples from the superhero universe to uh, teach chemistry to non-science students. Uh, as Karen mentioned, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the uh, modules that we've prepared for a biomedical uh, program to help them cover some of the chemistry uh, topics and knowledge that was removed from their program. So the students are supposed to learn this on their own. So that's why Carmen and I were asked to uh, provide them with some uh, ideas of solution or ways for uh, those students to learn this material. Yeah, please describe the approach you were using for moving towards these uh, alternative teaching. All right, so what we wanted to focus was a um, out of class approach, so asynchronous in a way that we would like our students to uh, evaluate themselves right off the bat. So we have some questions uh, that we're using online that we're using um, a platform called My Daylight. So those are questions that students can ask before they even start doing the module. So they know what's their level. You know, if they have a perfect score on those, uh, they will not need to do everything that's uh, coming forward for them, the, everything else that we've planned for them. So that's how they are evaluating themselves. And then they go on and they're, uh, they're able to look at a, at a uh, video lesson that we've prepared. So this video lesson is uh, made out of PowerPoint slides, mm -hmm. but the, the main thing on them is that as they're looking through those slides, there are questions that pop up, different types of questions, multiple choice questions, drag and drop questions. There are different types of questions you can have, but it stops the video. So the students must answer these questions before they continue mm -hmm. watching the video. So once they've answered that question, the video will continue. They'll watch another part of the video, answer some question. And um, you could set it up different ways. You could set it up that uh, you need to have the correct answer to be able to go forward. Or simply, uh, as long as you've tried the question, you could go forward. So they'll watch this video. Uh, we have different types of videos. We, uh, we have a video that's about 15 minutes. Uh, that's the video that we'll, we'll probably showcase to you and show you later on. So they've, they've, they're watching this whole video. After they've watched that video, they will move on to another series of questions, uh, an assessment that they could solve online. And we decided that those assessments will count for grades, so as a motivator. In this process, if they found that the video was not sufficient, we also have class notes that they could download. So class notes are um, just a drier version, a paper version they could print, annotate, or, or, or use to, uh, to bridge in the gaps that they didn't get from the video. In a nutshell, that's the process that we're using. Um, did someone suggest this approach to you or were you already using this type of approach previously prior to uh, the move to uh, alternative teaching methods? Well, uh, My Daylight is a platform that both Jan and I have uh, used before in our classes. So it's a great way to assess whether or not students um, understand uh, the content, uh, the concepts. Um, and, and so that's something that we're familiar with. The uh, interactive video, that was new. So that was in introduced to us by two uh, uh, of our colleagues at Dawson College, um, and that's Ahmad and uh, Kathy. And so they um, 
showed us how you can record your videos using PowerPoint, uh, you know, including the narration, uh, and then introduce that video into uh, H5P. And in H5P, that's where you can introduce questions and, and, and then uh, introduce that interaction with the students. Uh, so it was inspired by, by them. One thing that's interesting is that those two colleagues are not in chemistry. They're not even in, in science. And uh, because of Saltis, because of the meetings, the conference and stuff like that, we were introduced to them and we were talking and we, we figured out that, oh, they're using this platform, this, this new tool that's actually accessible for us. We just don't know how to use it. So the, the, with this discussion, they invited us to come over to their office and uh, they showed it to us. We were, uh, we were pleased and that's why we tried it out and we're, we're pretty happy with it. Um. Are, are all of these technologies provided by your college, like my Daylight, um, H5P? So if, if we start, yeah, the, the first technology that we're using is my Daylight. So my Daylight's a free online platform. So it's available to everybody. One good thing about my Daylight is that it could be used as a standalone. So meaning you're, you're just sending links to your students and they're, they're communicating with you by, by uh, those links. Or it could be embedded into an LMS, a learning management system. At our college, we're using Moodle. So uh, my day was easily put into Moodle. So the students don't even know that they're going outside of Moodle to answer these questions. They, they think they're still inside Moodle. So that's the first thing that we're using. After that, for the video, we're using the uh, PowerPoint. So available, our college uh, does give us access to uh, Microsoft Office, <laughs> the latest version. So yeah, we made some slides with this. Um, there's another uh, video that we made. We also use the Lightboard. So Lightboard is a different technology. Uh, this, these Lightboards, were, uh, we were able to use it because other colleges or university have them and they welcomed us. So Carmen and I went there <laughs> and, uh, and we were able to record. So once we're, we're satisfied with our video from PowerPoint, we upload it to YouTube. So YouTube, again, is a free platform. As long as you have an account, you'll be able to use that platform. So create a video to, to store it. So it will compress it. So you'll only need to feed your Moodle a link. You don't need to have a YouTube account. Um, the, the H5P will tolerate to a certain maximum size amount, the maximum size, uh, you to upload your video. It's just a, it's better to use YouTube or another source where, where you could store so that way there's only a link that's being transferred to your platform. So it's a lot, a lot less. Uh, it's not that heavy. So that way it rolls out without any glitch or anything like that. So, so can I just clarify that yeah. um, you have the option of uploading the video to the H5P website itself or platform? So yeah, so uh, you have Moodle. In Moodle, you will have your H5P. And inside H5P, you will feed it a link from YouTube or you could upload directly your mm. video. Yes. Okay. And I believe Dawson College has H5P installed directly in, yes. uh, yeah. in, in Moodle. So, yes. okay, that's great. H5P is also something that could be embedded in Moodle. So again, students don't need to go elsewhere. They, they stay in Moodle and that way they could access all this interactive video. After that, when they come out, they could also use uh, MyDaylight to evaluate them. And that's pretty much it. So all these technologies are either free or provided by our college. How can, uh, how can teachers get started with the basic functionality, let's say uh, with a PowerPoint? Uh, um, I have the impression that there's many steps and, and since you've been using these technologies for a while, you probably are pretty tech savvy and, and aware of, of what the technologies can do, but perhaps there's other teachers that are just starting out. Um, would they be just as well maybe to start with uh, producing videos in PowerPoint as a first step? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's quite easy to put together those videos just using PowerPoint. So without H5P, without using Moodle, you know, if you just stick with PowerPoint, use your lecture slides. Some teachers already have lecture slides prepared, so you can use them. And then the only change is to record narrations, right? So for each slide, you can record um, what you would normally share with your students. Um, and, and then the recording is saved uh, into the PowerPoint. And it's not, it's not like a separate file, it's just all combined together. Uh, and so, and each recording can be done for each slide. So if you watch back and you think, well, I don't really like what I said in slide 15. Well, then you can actually delete that one recording and then re-record. Um, and then from there, once you have your presentation uh, with the narration saved, you can send that off to your students. You won't have 
you know, the interactive type video that H5P um, allows you to do, but at least you can still send your students a PowerPoint presentation with the narration. So that means you can do asynchronous teaching. Great, and if you wanted to, I guess you could export the video to MP4 as well and yes. host that on YouTube. Yes. So, great. Mm -hmm. uh, and so again, if, if some uh, people are uh, afraid or just don't want to use YouTube, I would understand, um, you could just simply send your student that file. That file will, will be much bigger than sending a link, but you can still do that. Mm -hmm. And same thing, uh, some people are, are uh, don't want to use YouTube because they don't want it to be public and stuff like that, but YouTube allows you to uh, store your video and keep them private and you can only access them through a link so you could send a link to your students and they will access it but they could not find the video by entering keywords in the into the search bar so uh, do either of you have any other advice to teachers who are hoping to finish the, this semester uh, using these sorts of techniques Plenty, <laughs> no, no, uh, they're only advice. But um, w one thing that I'm thinking that's not related to technology, but it's it's related to your coworkers. If you have one colleague, it doesn't even need to be in your discipline. If you have one colleague that you could bounce ideas off, that's that's the best tool you could get. I mean, I, I'm lucky because I have Carmen that mm -hmm. I could bounce a, a lot of ideas off. But I mean, by exchanging with her, by trying platforms with her, I mean, yes, we still pull her hair sometimes uh, uh, because things are not working. But at least I could, I could talk to her and she'll, she'll send a link to me and, oh, yeah, and we're debunk debunking this together. So by finding someone that you could um, uh, evolve with in this process is the best. And I know it's not always feasible, but, but I think that's, that's where uh, Saltis came in handy also for, for some of these things, because we just talked to people and realized that, hey, wait a minute, you're, you're actually in the same building as me, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know about this stuff that I don't, I don't and, and we were, were talking. So if you can find somebody that's interested in learning, that, that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah, if you have a, you know, a, a community of practice within your institution, you know, um, definitely reach out to them, because they have knowledge and, you know, I'm sure they'd be willing to support and help you in trying out new things. Um, but also during this time, actually, it's very stressful to all of a sudden transition to online teaching if you're not used to it. And so trying to keep things simple yeah. is, is the way to go. And I think, you know, something just with PowerPoint, taking your slides, just adding a bit of narration, you know, makes, uh, makes the asynchronous teaching uh, accessible then. That's right. Taking one step at a time, as you said, definitely. Uh, because if you're saying too far and you're saying, oh, that's, that's impossible, you're not going to do anything. You, could, you don't even need to try a whole lesson. You could just try 10 slides or even a problem solving. So it doesn't even have to be about theory. You just set up a problem, try to solve it live, record your voice. That's it. Stop. That will be your, your video. And you start with a one minute video. Then you like it, your students like it, you make a two minute video, a three minute video, then you have a whole series of video and your colleague likes them as well. So he, he or she's gonna try to make the other module and then you don't need to concentrate on that module because he or she has made it. So you can do the other module, then you do some theory and that's, that's how you'll build your, your, uh, your little uh, course. Some good tag teaming there, uh, <laughs> great. But yeah, using one tool at a time. I mean, PowerPoint is a, is a great tool, offers a lot of solution. You could just, just use this. Uh, you're, you're interested into YouTube. I mean, you, you've, you've used YouTube, but you don't necessarily have a channel. That's fine. Just create a channel and make a playlist of other people's videos that you like. And that's it. You don't need to create any videos, but you've put together all the videos you like into a playlist. Uh, that, that's one thing. You want to use H5P with a text or with something else? You can. You want to use Moodle just for dropping some files? You can. So all these tools are independent. Of course, when you put them together, um, um, the sum of the parts is bigger than each of those, but um, you don't need to do all this together at once on your first shot. Uh, so I'd like to thank uh, Carmen and Yan for joining us today and generously sharing uh, your process uh, with the College Network. Uh, I'd like to thank my co-host Kevin as well uh, for participating in the podcast today. And uh, for our viewers, uh, please feel free to add some of your stories about the transition to alternative teaching, uh, your tips, uh, your ideas in the comments area below. Thanks a lot, uh, Yan, Carmen, and Kevin, and uh, we'll see you in a future podcast. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs>